Welcome back to the Watercolor Journey Painting Challenge. Hi, I'm Chris, your host for this challenge, and this week I'm going to share my hand lettering techniques for non-letters, like me. And you're going to want to watch this lesson all the way to the end because I'm going to share a powerful lettering concept with you that has been mind-blowingly successful in helping me to grow as an artist. Now, by non-letterer, I mean I consider myself not very adept at lettering. If I really sat down and spent hours practicing, I could probably get pretty good, but that's not really my focus and I don't foresee it being my focus anytime soon. But the truth is that hand lettering is in big demand out there. And if you're learning creative skills to start your own POD shop, print shop, learn surface design, start teaching creative skills, etc., you're going to want to pay attention to this. And even if you're just painting for fun and doing your thing, maybe you don't think lettering matters that much to you, but let me tell you, it always comes up. If you're painting your own greeting cards for gifts, hand lettering is the best and most unique way to make your cards special. If you're making a poster or a t-shirt or gift tag or signing your name at the bottom of a painting, you might also find this lesson helpful. I've had my ear to the ground for a few years now and several art agents, successful artists, designers and freelancers are all saying that unique hand lettering is incredibly valuable in art today. The coolest thing about this is that the word unique is the key here. I mean, they're looking for funky, crazy, outside the box looking scripts, block letters, illustrated letters, whatever artists are dreaming up these days. The reason it's cool is that you can get as crazy and as creative as you want with this, and there's a good chance it'll work within reason, of course but the sky's the limit. And this is a great area for experimentation and exploration because it's open and it's still being discovered. I've never loved my handwriting. So that's one of the reasons I avoided lettering for so long until I saw that even my crazy style would work in a commercial setting. I can't give you too many visual examples here because of copyright law, but I can send you in the direction of Lee Ann Ford, Little Rogers as two fantastic examples of really outside the box lettering that's really killing it out there. Now, maybe we're not here to kill it and so to speak, but we are here to have fun and I want you to feel free to take your own brand of unique lettering and let it flow. One of my biggest struggles is to overcome those little voices in my head, AKA imposter syndrome, that keep telling me I don't do this well enough to be doing it. The oxymoron in this is if I don't do the thing, I can't good enough to do the thing. You know what I mean? So today I want to get some lettering practice in and I want to take you along for the ride. Using the color palette you've chosen for this challenge or whatever colors you want to use today, I want you to pick out two to three colors. Make sure you can get a really dark version of at least one or two of them. That's because one color will be a background color and the other color or colors will be for the actual lettering. We want to make sure that the lettering has good contrast against the background so it's easy to read. I'm going to use a light version of my gray for the background and I'll use my rusty brown and my blue for the lettering. The first step is to paint the background. Now this is a process that I absolutely love because it's so relaxing. In fact, I've made an entire class based on creating watercolor backgrounds for all kinds of projects, which you can find in a link below in the description. Let me tell you, this process gets really fun because there is no limit to what you can do here. I love texture in my backgrounds and I want my backgrounds to feel like part of the painting. So I welcome rough strokes, lights and darks, and even spaces here and there in my paintings so that you can see some of that paper texture. And I love to let it dry into blooms and some other texture effects. I will generally get a larger brush for this process because I'll be covering a larger area at once. Now, if you really want your background to be smoother, I suggest you use less water and do a wet on wet technique. So in other words, wet the entire area with a light coat of water and begin to put down your paint as evenly as possible, smoothing out some of the darker areas into some of the lighter ones and see how it dries. An ombre effect, which is a fading effect, is super fun in this case too, with one or two colors. If you're used to doing smooth backgrounds and you want to get out of your comfort zone today, Follow along with me as I just throw some paint on the paper and have fun with making marks that never turn out the same way twice. Watercolor painting for me is kind of like a kaleidoscope experience. No two paintings ever look the same, even if I paint the same thing 20 times. 
Once you're done painting your background, let it dry completely. This is really important. Otherwise, the lettering won't be as clear and sharp, unless you want that blurry lettering effect. In that case, let it almost dry completely before painting your letters. If it's almost dry, but not quite, you'll get a nice blurry effect as the edges sort of melt into the background. If you try this and your lettering just sort of melt completely into the background, then you'll know the background was just still too wet. As you can see, there are so many ways you can do this project. So I encourage you to just play with all the different options and test their limit. Your next question might be, what words would I paint on these lettering projects, right? I'm so glad you asked because I'm going to share with you my favorite lettering projects to paint, which are very short quotes or inspiring one word paintings. I've done quite a few of these because I can do them quickly when I don't have a lot of time and I can hang them around my studio to inspire myself to keep going on those hard days. I also want to quickly talk about a word of the year because this was life changing for me. If you haven't heard about a word of the year, a few years back, I noticed some of the artists I was following were choosing one word to be their kind of North Star for the entire year and pull them forward into their goals. To be honest, I just didn't get it at first. I mean, how can one word encompass 365 days? That's a lot to ask of one word, right? <laughs> this was a concept I really wrestled with for myself. And in the end, I knew I wasn't going to get it until I tried it. And when I did, I am telling you, it blew my mind. What I learned is that a word of the year is meant to be your focus for that year. And I began to paint my word of the year as watercolor projects, like I'm showing you today. Then I would hang those projects up in my studio and see it every day, all year long. As an example, a couple of years ago, I was starting to feel the burnout. So I chose the word rest as my word to focus on for that year. I worked on the definition of rest, how to find rest in pockets of time I had between tasks, how to restructure my time for more rest, how to actually rest when I was supposed to be resting instead of my mind going a mile a minute, which is an art in and of itself. And do you know that by the end of that year, I felt rested. It was magical and it's worked with every word I've chosen. So today I'm going to be painting my word of the year for 2024, which is actually two words this time. It will be the first time doing this, but I felt I needed both words in order to zero in on what I needed for this year, which is implementation and focus. To simplify this, I'm going to use the word implement, and then I'm going to use a plus symbol for the and, and then the word focus. To illustrate that these are two separate concepts, I'm going to use two different types of lettering for each word. For implement, I'm going to use a script. This is a longer word, and I think it will look interesting in a continuous curvy line like cursive writing. For the word focus, I'm going to use block lettering and maybe spread those letters out a little bit to create more of a balanced composition since this word is pretty short. Of course, each of these words will be in a different color, which will help me distinguish them as different concepts as well. Do you see how watercolor painting can help you tell a story no matter what you're painting? It's pretty cool. <laughs> this also gives me an opportunity to show you different types of lettering that you can use in your project. If you're going to be choosing to do a word of the year, I would love to hear in the comments what word that would be and what short quotes might be inspiring you right now. If you haven't tried this, I highly recommend it. It doesn't sound like much, but putting your hand lettering words or quotes out where you can see them every day is a really powerful practice that makes such a difference, especially over a long period of time. Now, I can't guarantee you results, but I can say that most of the people I've spoken to have gotten really good results from this practice. So if you give it a shot, let me know how it goes for you. Try out your own unique hand lettering that you may or may not like at first and just let it be for a few hours, a few days, then come back to it and look at it with fresh eyes. Share your project with us in the community and ask for feedback to see what others think. Now, this can be a scary thing to do, but it's the best way to grow. I did not grow so quickly as when I started to share my work and see what people were, how they were reacting to it. Plus, our community is filled with the kindest, sweetest, most helpful people, and you might be amazed at what reactions you'll get to what you think might be a bad project. I personally don't like my own handwriting. And if you're the same way, this will be a great challenge for you and a way for you to see your own human blueprint with a whole new perspective. 
I also have a new PDF lettering download for you to add to your workbook, as well as the entire updated workbook in two separate downloads in case you're joining us for the first time. This includes a guide for the tools and materials I'm using in the no fill palette color formula I shared last week, plus more. Feel free to print out these PDFs or save them in a digital reading app like GoodNote. And you can build a lovely workbook that you can use as a reference for any projects you're working on going forward. Now, I want to take a moment to share some of the beautiful projects that have been posted in the community from our challenge members, like these lovely paintings by Alessandra, Madalena's beautiful glass painting, Elizabeth's gorgeous seahorse, and abstract painting. And stay tuned for more member project features in future lessons. Thanks for joining me in lesson four of the watercolor journey painting challenge for some fun, easy, quirky watercolor lettering. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that you'll allow yourself to letter in a whole new way that's outside the normal box of what we consider good lettering. If you're watching this lesson but haven't joined us in the challenge yet, you'll find a link in the description to get signed up for all the challenge lessons, the challenge workbook, a possible feature in one of these videos, and join our community where most of the magic is happening. And you can click the image on the screen now to watch these lessons from the beginning. In the meantime, if you enjoyed this video, I would so appreciate it if you would hit the like button, subscribe to this channel, and tap the notification bell so you don't miss any new videos as they come out. If you're watching these lessons as I post them, I will see you next week for lesson five. But if the next lesson is already live when you're watching this, you'll see a link to it on the screen now so you can watch this Netflix style. Either way, I'll see you soon.